Welkom vanuit de Leavesden Studios in Watford, net onder de rook van Londen. Hier in deze oude vliegtuigfabriek werd de afgelopen tien jaar... de grootste en meest succesvolle filmserie aller tijden opgenomen. Vandaag mogen we een unieke blik achter de schermen werpen... vanwege de laatste film, Harry Potter en The Deathly Hallows. Met Harry Potter en The Deathly Hallows Part 1 komt het einde in zicht van een filmserie waar een hele generatie mee opgroeide. We nemen afscheid van Harry, Ron, Hermeline en al die anderen die we in de afgelopen tien jaar zo goed leren kennen. Vandaag spreken we een aantal van hen en kijken we backstage bij de opnames. What's it like to sit here in this set for the very last time? It is very, very strange. This is my, my last day of interviews for Harry Potter on the Harry Potter sets. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it is a bit of a momentous kind yeah. of day. It's very, very, very strange. Emotional for you? Um, a little bit, considering, just particularly because I know that probably after we leave, they're just going to knock this all down. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> it was just incredibly strange to know I would be, um, you know, working on these sets in the studio, filming um, with Dan and Rupert for the last time. It was um, really... A strange feeling and, and hugely emotional. A lot of crying and everything. Yeah, we really did kind of get quite emotional. Um, I think just kind of 10 years just kind of uh, just hit me kind of all at once, really, because we have kind of it's been kind of my childhood here, really, and mm -hmm. suddenly it just all stops on one kind of shot and then it's all over. So it's. It's going to take a while, I think, for me to kind of adjust to yeah. life without this. De vorige keer dat we Harry, Ron en Hermeline zagen, treurden ze om het verlies van hun geliefde perkamenters en maakten ze zich klaar om afscheid te nemen van dit veilige zwijnstein. Ondertussen is ons Oleke Trio op de vlucht voor hij die niet genoemd mag worden en zijn ze op zoek naar de resterende gruzilementen en de sleutel om de heer van het duister te verslaan. The Aura Office no longer plays any part in the protection of Harry Potter. Voldemort heeft inmiddels met zijn dooddoeners bezit genomen van het huis van Malfi dus. En die is daar niet heel blij mee. The first part opens at the, at the Malfoy uh, dining yeah, table. At my house. Yeah. Here, yeah. And uh, then we see Voldemort sitting at the head of the table. What's happened? Well, Voldemort has decided to make my house his base. Which feels fantastic to me. It feels like a ringing endorsement. It feels like, you know, uh, things finally my fantasy is coming true for about two seconds <laughs> <laughs> until he starts treating me like dirt, takes my wand off me, and uh, looks like he's going to kill me but can't even be bothered killing me. Mm -hmm. uh, at which point uh, I suddenly start to worry. I have an extreme concern about my future and where my place is going to be in the new world. I must do it with another's wand. Surely one of you would like the honor. He's very much the man in power, taking his time, enjoying his power. He's at the peak of his power, about to grasp victory and defeat Hogwarts um, and Harry Potter. So there's a, there's a sort of um, emperor-like, you know, chief executive man with everything at his disposal atmosphere going on. What about you, Lucius? My lord. I require your wand. He's only getting worse, Voldemort, at time. He's not easing up. Mm -hmm. He's getting far less patient with his with his people around him. So there's a lot of uh, a lot of threats going around. Um, and generally he's orchestrating the worst attack he's yet to have on, on, on Harry and the uh, and the good guys. Heer Voldemort weet dat Harry en zijn vrienden zich in het huis van Harry's oom en tante bevinden. Ze weten hem echter in volledige verwarring te brengen. Ze nemen allemaal een slok van de wisseldrank, waardoor er in één keer zeven Harry's zijn. Wow, we're identical. We're trying to get Harry out of the Dursleys safely. And uh, to kind of conf and Voldemort obviously is, is really trying to um, take Harry down now. So. Um, we, we all choose to disguise ourselves as Harry's as well to confuse him. So Voldemort doesn't know which one the real Harry is. Um, so that's the idea behind that. 
Voor Daniel Radcliffe betekent deze scène dat hij onder meer een BH moet dragen. Het is voor een scène waar een van onze vrouwelijke karakters transformeert in een duplicate van mij. Um, in de in the eerste part of the film where, where we try to escape from Pirivet Drive and everybody just disguises themselves as me um, and we all have to be decoy Harrys and we all sneak out together. Um, you know, she is a girl and she transforms into me and I'm still in her clothes. It's quite a cheap gag, but I'm, I'm, quite, I'm, I'm quite fond of it personally. Carry on humour, which I love. Oh, I thought wearing bras. Oh, well, we're in bronze. Yeah, 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 absolutely, yes. <laughs> yeah. That as well. I mean, that, that was that was that was quite a you know a cheap joke, but it's yeah, it'll get a laugh definitely. Yeah. And you said he was lying about that tattoo. Harry, your eyesight really is awful. On the count of three, hold tight, Harry. Ook nu weer zien we hoe Harry en zijn vrienden op hun bezemstelen door de lucht vliegen. Iets dat ze in de afgelopen tien jaar honderden keren hebben gedaan. Maar in het dagelijks leven is Daniel Radcliffe een stuk minder mobiel. Do you already have your driving license now? No, I still don't. Still don't? Still don't. I know, it's a, it's a disgrace. I, I could. I think you, you can drive in England from when you're about 17. I'm 20, you know, 21 in a month. Mm -hmm. So I, it's pretty shameful that I haven't got one yet. Hopefully. Why not? At some point next year. Just time. But yeah. you do ride a broom. I do ride a broom, so if, if, if yeah. all else fails, I can, that can always be my, be my fallback position. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. What's it like to ride a broomstick? I'm going to try it. That's yeah. what I've heard, right, okay. Yeah. So I've uh, basically, so you're, you're my first male interviewer. Mm -hmm. that. All the other people who've interviewed me have been girls. Okay. And they're also having a go on the broom, and they said, any advice? And I said, no, it's fine. It's uh -huh. fine if you're a girl. My advice to you as a man is if you don't have to do it, don't. It's really <laughs> painful. Um, it's not, it, it's, they've made it better now because they used to, because what you'll have, you'll have a sort of a bucket seat, mm -hmm. which is sort of what we had for the last two films. But before that, we were just on a bike saddle. Yeah. So it was very, very painful. Okay. Um, but just, yeah, just, just sort of, just try and, just absolutely, when they, because they're going to put you in a harness, mm -hmm. just take the time, don't be embarrassed, make sure everything is out the way. Everything. Okay, everything. Well, that's a lot. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so take your time and yeah. make sure everything's clear, because it's not, it's not a mistake you want to make. Yeah. Voordat ik zelfs mijn leven ga wagen, mogen we kijken in de werkplaats waar alle bezemstelen worden gemaakt, zodat we zeker weten dat het veilig is. How comfortable are they? Uh, they're pretty good. I mean, they, really? they, they, um, they have these, they have seats for the, for when they go onto the effects rigs. They have seats that are bolted on these little plates here, mm -hmm. padded, so that, and they're strapped into those, so they're very safe. Um, the brooms actually have titanium tubes inside, uh, different types of titanium or aluminium or bronze alloys, uh, stirrups, casters, and they they are designed to to put their feet in a comfortable position. Is there a difference between girls' brooms and men's brooms? No, 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 no there's, the, uh, there's, there's, there's any, any gender can fly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Did the technique of broom riding change in those 10 years? Um, technically it has for us. We, we've changed the, the manner of driving it, we've smoothed it out, we've made it more fluid. Um, We've, we've had to sort of develop and re-engineer the whole system because we started off with small children of, uh, you know, probably 40 kilos. Mm -hmm. And now we've got strapping men of probably 90 kilos. So um, that's a huge difference mechanically. I'm only 83. Oh, well, you're fine. Yeah. En dan is het eindelijk zover. Na tien jaar mogen we het geheim onthullen van de vliegende bezemstil. Het is een apart gevoel. Hier bracht de Harry Potter cast een groot deel van hun tijd door. Gewoon voor een groene wand op een soort kermisattractie van ruim 4 meter hoog... met een paar windmachines op je gericht. En wanneer de tovenaars van de Warner Studios aan de slag gaan, is dit het verbluffende resultaat. Ik moet zeggen dat het best wel spannend is op zo'n bezemsteel. En Daniel Radcliffe had gelijk. De zaak moet een beetje opzij geschoven worden. Behalve veel spanning en sensatie is er ook een feestje te vieren in Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 1. Eindelijk is het dan zover in een magische wereld van Harry Potter. Een bruiloft. Bill Wemel trouwt met Fleur Delacour. En dan maken we ook kennis met de nieuwe minister van toverkunsten, Rufus Schobbejak, die met een aantal zeer vreemde geschenken komt aanzetten. A device of my own making. In the hope that when things seem most dark, it will show him the light. Brilliant. What is it? 
De rol van Rufus Schobbejak wordt gespeeld door de gerenommeerde Britse acteur Bill Nighy. Finally, we see you in a Harry Potter film. Why did it take so long? I've no idea. They finally came to their senses. I thought I was going to be the only English actor of a certain age who wasn't in Harry Potter, but it turned out not to be the case. You thought they would forget you? I thought they had forgotten me, but uh, finally I'm a wizard. You came into this close family that everybody, everybody's talking about. How did that feel? Uh, to be honest, I was insecure, paranoid and... Uh, and freaked out. But that's how I normally go to work. Okay. I mean, that's a normal day. So, I mean, that's how you generally begin jobs. What is your role in the story? I'm a very, 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 very important person. <laughs> I'm a minister of magic, <laughs> and uh, I'm very powerful and very nice uh, in my view. Um, and uh, I'm a new addition to the Harry Potter movies. Uh, he's never been seen before, so it was quite a responsibility. How do you pronounce it in English, the name? Uh, Scrimjaw. Scrimjaw. In Dutch it's Schobbejak. Good God. <laughs> Could you say that? Say it one more time. Schobbejak. Schobbejak. It's not very good. It's close. Hang on, Harry! Harry wordt tijdens deze film constant op de hielen gezeten door de dooddoeners... die hem in handen willen krijgen en hem levend moeten afleveren bij Voldemort. Hagrid! <laughs> Dit zijn de kostuums van de dooddoeners. Sowieso voor acteurs misschien wel de leukste rollen om te spelen. Want ze hebben de meeste actie, de hipste kleding en stoere tatoeages. We're going to turn you into a Death Eater. Ja, yeah, I heard. <laughs> How are we going to do that? We're going to give you a dark mark. So you can summon Lord Voldemort if you dare. En zo makkelijk gaat dat dus. Gewoon een plak plaatje. Wow, that's fast. <laughs> Very fast. What happens now? <laughs> you should come. <laughs> nu mag ik mezelf dus een echte dooddoener noemen en hoor ik bij deze club van zeer kwaadaardige en wraakzuchtige wezens. It must be fun to be a Death Eater. Uh, it's fun more to... fun than to be Harry Potter, for instance. Uh, I wouldn't know. I should imagine Dan's yeah. had quite a good time. Uh, but it's fun to play the bad guy, of course. He's not a bad guy. He's a guy that thinks he's right. Uh, actually, playing a bad guy is not fun because uh, he is a bad guy. No, no, no. He, he, the thing It's about... a death eater, come on. No, he thinks he's doing the right thing. He uh, thinks he believes in separation of the races, he thinks wizards are better than muggles. He uh -huh. thinks he's doing absolutely the right thing. Mm -hmm. It's nice to be hated. I yeah. do think getting a reaction on people is great. What was it like wearing that wig every day? I love the wig. In fact, you know, uh, I'm... Uh, does it itch? As an actor, no, it doesn't itch, but it does get in your mouth and you try and eat. That's the thing. Every single lunchtime, I tie it back. They tie it loosely because uh -huh. they don't want to destroy the wig and then it will all fall out again. I go, why don't they tie it tight? They don't tie it tight because you'd rip it. But, um... But as soon as you put the wig on, the character appears. Have you ever been jealous of uh, the, the Death Eaters, for instance, because they have all the fun? Yeah. Well, yeah. You, I mean, they're, they're able to be so evil. And yeah. Just do, you know, pick on little kids or something. You're always a jolly joker. It's, it's, yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, it's, it, it, can be a bit, it can be a bit funny at times doing that. But at the same time, it's good because when we go out and we meet random people, mm -hmm. they, they're always really approachable to us because uh -huh. they associate Fred and George's, which is great. But we were out with Tom. And there was a little boy, wasn't there, who wouldn't go and talk he to wouldn't him. Go, he, could, he couldn't speak to Tom because he thought he was Malfoy and he thought he was really evil. evil. Do some people hate you? Yes, definitely. Yeah. I mean, they're nice when they say it. They go, oh, oh, yeah, I hate you. Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh, thank you, nice to meet you too, sort of thing. Uh, but you, you can only take it as a compliment because they only see you as a character. They don't see you as a normal, as a, as a, as a, as a muggle. So, yeah, uh -huh. just take it, take it as... I've learned to take it as a compliment over the years. And then Dobby heard Creature mention Harry Potter's name. Zometeen zien we hoe huiselfjes Dobby en Knijster tot leven worden gewekt. Hoe Harry en zijn vrienden vermomd het ministerie van toverkunsten binnendringen. En hoe Harry en Ron voor het eerst in de hele Harry Potter filmserie enorme ruzie krijgen. You think I don't know how this feels? And you don't know how it feels. En er lijkt een romans op te bloeien tussen Harry en Hermeline. A few months of loneliness on the road possibly provokes a bit of lust. Dat allemaal zometeen.